Uh, the trick question. Uh, well, uh, Gap was a full participant today, so that was a positive. Um, and everyone else was uh, at least a partial participant or, or full, so I think we're in a pretty good spot. Does that mean everyone is available for tomorrow? Uh, well, I'll wait to see how things shake out, but um, my thought in general, it was good to have you know, guys out there today. Um, how is Landry coming along? Um, better. I mean, you know, was able to do a bit more today, so uh, that's positive. What are you looking for tomorrow aside from carryover? I know you're going to so what else would you be, are you looking for? Well, I just think making sure that uh, we're worried about us first. Obviously, it's going to be a pretty good test for us. Playing a, a, a different opponent, you know, personnel is going to be different. Uh, there's probably limited feel or familiarity with, um, you know, that roster, but, um, getting our guys to really work on details today. So that's the part, that's the carryover I'm looking for, is making sure we're minimizing slippage, min minimizing you know, some of the mistakes we saw in the first four practices. Uh, we were better for it today, but you know we want to see if we can apply that tomorrow. What does, it do? Sorry. does it help in, in a different way with it being a team not from the NBA who is in season and kind of has their wheels greased and their chemistry? Yeah, you know, it's going to certainly be a challenge, to your point. They've they played, you know, some games, and they've been together for a little bit. Um, the teams in the NBL, they're a very physical league, um, and just watching uh, the Cans, they, they do a great job of playing with pace. You know, they're very physical. They, they run a lot of NBA actions, which is great, uh, so we'll get a test there, but uh, the pace at which they play is, is going to test us a little bit, you know, moving from one action to the next. Um, and defensively, they, they're going to change things up. So... They do a great job of switching from quarter to quarter, game to game, you know, how they guard. You know, do we have the ability to process and read those situations? How do you say that team name? What's the correct pronunciation? The, can, the Cans. Cans, okay. No, you got that right? Cans. That's what I was told. <laughs> Soft R, like this. Cans, okay. yeah. Thank you. What will be the approach of Bilal? Um, probably a question for Bilal, but as far <laughs> as I'm concerned, I want him to see uh, some minutes, get an opportunity to play. Uh, I don't want to play with, with a clouded head. Just get out and do what you've done the last five practices. Uh, continue to guard at a high rate. You know, play to your strengths. Try to minimize some of the mistakes that we've touched on, but, you know, I don't want to overthink it. I know long-term there's um, hope that he can play different positions, but how do you think his role will kind of start out in that sense? Uh, as far as position? Mm -hmm. um, he'll be a forward. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. I mean, I think he's, he's shown the ability to um, play you know, different different places on the floor and, and have different responsibilities. Uh, we've seen him, you know, as a secondary playmaker at times through camp. Um, his ability to rebound and push the ball. Um, so he has a license to do that. I don't want to necessarily put him in a box to say you, you can and can't do these things, but see where he is and, and, and watch that role expand. It seems like there's been some talk of Jordan Poole playing more on the ball, maybe more as like a, a lead guard. Is that accurate? And, and at times, I think it, it, it can happen. Um, I don't know how how soon that'll happen, but sure, at times. Um, you know, I think Tyus is going to be terrific for us, and I think it's great that those guys can you know kind of platoon lead guard responsibilities. But you know, that's the strength of Tyus, his ability to orchestrate offense, keep things you know. Um, spaced correctly and then and make the right reads. You know, he, he's done so for a lot of years as far as high assist, low turnover. Um, I think Jordan will grow in that area, but both guys, you know, will have the opportunity to push and play make. Um, you know, and it's, of course, their responsibility to keep us organized. Coach, injuries notwithstanding, how much is the starting five tomorrow night going to resemble the starting five against Indiana for game one? Um, not a lot. Okay. I mean, it's still some time to, you know, see what we like and play with different things. But I still think we we've got some time to make a, a firm determination. Mm -hmm. Quick question for you, Coach. Uh, we usually ask about offense, but defense. How's the communication been um, so far leading up to, to practice? Uh, better. Uh, still not where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that goes back to the previous point about details. Um, you see it in the drills. We see it, you know, in, in the stations, but get to live play and it, and it kind of falls off. That's where mm -hmm. we want to make sure we're, uh, we're sound and building on that foundation so that we, we have something solid, a base that's solid going into you know, regular season in, in late October. And then we know the game is global. Australian fans are excited for tomorrow. Just what does it mean to have Australian eyes on the NBA game? 
Yeah, it's you know it's, it's exciting. You know, obviously, you know, NBL is a terrific league, mm -hmm. and I've uh, had the opportunity to coach a handful of guys, you know, from that league. And Taj McCall, who was with us in the summer, um, you know, he was he was a great piece uh, for us. Uh, I guess two summers ago, um, I had Tory Craig out in Denver, mm -hmm. um, and Alexander Cooks. So you know, it, it's a it's a high level league, very competitive. Uh, like I said, very physical, and the way they play, the style of play there. It mimics the NBA is pretty much as close as you can get. Mm -hmm. Coach, speaking of eyeballs, last night got home. Celtics Sixers, major television, preseason packed. Were you surprised? I was one of that. No, no, I wasn't surprised. I at was all. like, wow! <laughs> <laughs> that was like the regular season. <laughs> no, not surprised at all. It was a, it was a heck of a matchup. It was Pritchard going off there, but like the excitement, energy for preseason. That's kind yeah. of new. Is that? No, no, it's great. I think it's a good sign. You know, obviously, I'm not too excited for the Celtics or no. the Sixers, <laughs> but you know, the fact that you know fans are dialing into the preseason, it, it does mean that. Uh, the health of the league and the excitement, you know, generating into the regular season is there. I was recovering from my Ravens and Orioles. Day, so. <laughs> Tough night. <laughs> Jordan uh, talked about how excited he is to run pick and rolls with Daniel Gafford. And yeah. I know Jordan ran a lot more pick and rolls last year than he, he did previously. What do you think about his potential in, in that action? Well, the two-man action between those two is going to be good. It's going to be fun. You know, Jordan has the ability to shoot with range. Um, like I said, he can score on all three levels. Um, you know, shoot behind screens, but. His ability to get downhill, and of course we know Gaff's ability to put pressure on the rim. And it's probably uh, quite a few highlights in the making. Also, Coach, wanted to ask you, just been seeing James Posey kind of seem like an elevated, taking initiative, talking to the guy, taking to the side. What has his leadership, his tutelage has done for the, the guy so far? Well, it's been good. I mean, we saw it last year, maybe a little bit more on display for you this year, <laughs> but um, uh, that role is, uh, it, it's something that's so underrated. The mm -hmm. guy that's played in the league, played at a high level, played at the highest stage with some of the biggest stars in the game. You know, to impart a little mentorship, a leadership, um, and guidance for, for young players. Sure. You know, beyond just you know what we do on the floor. Thank you. Mm -hmm. How excited for this are you tomorrow night? Oh, really excited. I'm excited to play a game first and foremost. I haven't yeah. played a game in a while, and to compete against somebody other than ourselves, but. Also an NBL team. I've been seeing these NBL teams play NBA teams for so many years, and to be a part of it, it's really cool. It's really cool. You, I assume you've played NBA teams for the other person. I haven't, no, no. Every year probably like two or three teams come over, mm -hmm. and unlucky enough, Sydney Kings have never come over. So I've been watching them from television, so it's really cool to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. How's training camp going for you personally, not from the team standpoint? It's going great. I mean, I've been loving it. I'm competing every single day. Everyone's a unbelievable competitor. Everyone's been really willing to learn. Everyone comes from a different background, different history, and everyone's got a bit of advice to share, and everyone's been really willing to, to learn. Has one voice kind of emerged above the others? Who's talking most? I don't think so. I think that's one thing about this team. Everyone's got a bit of experience and a bit of knowledge to share, and everyone's been so willing to share. Um, Tyus is one. He's got an unbelievable basketball mind. He's been pretty vocal, and I really love listening to him talk. Xavier, first off, how you doing? I'm doing good, bro. How you doing? I'm doing excellent. First off, I want to talk about the Australian fans. You know, the excitement, the buzz. Just what does this mean to them having you here playing an NBL team? And there's also fans that hit me up and said they're coming tomorrow. Just what does that mean for them? There's fans coming tomorrow? That's yeah. cool, bro. That's dope. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I've got nothing but love for the Australian fans. Um, the fan base back home is unbelievable. We really feel the love over here. And I can't wait to play again, especially against some Aussie guys to compete yeah. against them boys. I've been battling these boys for years now, for years now. And, I played this team in the semifinals last year, so mm -hmm. I've got some real, some, some, some love for these boys, I guess you could say. I guess, uh, to your former team, how often do you get to keep up with them and how do you follow the Sydney Kings? Sydney Kings, man, that's my second home, you know. Mm -hmm. I've been, they really helped my career the way it is right now, so I've got nothing but love for them boys. And um, I've been following every single game, reaching out to a couple of the boys, mm -hmm. and I've been there for, for four seasons, so I've got a real strong connection to a lot of them guys. And then for you, with another year under your belt on, on the Wizards, uh, I've noticed you kind of taking your wing, under your wing, and just talking to guys. What does that leadership role mean to you? That's one thing about this team. It's more of a leadership committee. Um, there's no one captain. There's a lot of guys that can speak up. And I'm getting a lot more familiar with the terms here and the, the system here. So I've got a voice to speak on to the younger guys that are still learning. And then one more for you. I know I would call you an excellent cobber. Uh, what, what have you worked on that would exude that you've, you know, just taken another step in your game this year? Well, in the off-season, I got to play some real high-level basketball. That really helps when you get to play high-level basketball and your, your mind's still, you're still learning on the court. So getting that experience was unbelievable. I put on a little bit of weight in the off-season, which helps out a lot. And yeah, it's been a good off-season. Appreciate you. You're good.
you said you're on the note of you battling on the court. How do you expect the Wizards slash NBA style of basketball to collide with the Australian style of basketball? That you're used to? Yeah, I mean, one thing about Cairns, they get up and down. They're a fast-paced team, and so are we. So that's going to be awesome to see. Um, they shoot a lot of threes as well. They shoot a, they've got a high volume three point team. A lot of their big shoot threes, which are pretty similar to the NBA. Um, yeah, a couple of things. And coach said, speaking of that, that he wants you guys to play with more pace and play with more threes, taking and making more threes. How's that been coming in training camp? And are you excited to play under that style of basketball this year? Oh, for sure. I mean, whenever you can run and gun, the players love that. Um, the players don't necessarily love those kind of teams where you're stuck down in the half court playing system basketball. You like to run, have freedom, and play. And that's one thing I love about coach. He gives us that freedom to play. Do you know any of the guys? Okay, Canes. Kansas, yeah, Kansas, yeah. Yeah. Kansas, yeah. So bad. Yeah. American accent. No, they say Canes over here. Yeah, <laughs> just shut up Canes. It's all good. Okay. Um, do I know them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The basketball circle in Australia is so small. Yeah. There's only 10 NBL teams in the league, so it's kind of tough to not to get to, you know, personal relationship with these kind of guys. So I'm excited to go, go up against them. And even the coach, 40, that's my guy. 40 coached me in Sydney for a year back what three years ago so 40 is my guy i'll get dinner with 40 one of these days and That's yeah what i was gonna ask yeah okay yeah, yeah. um when you got here last year it was late in the season so you didn't have too much time to adjust to the way the nba plays going into a first opportunity to play a full season what would you say you've been able to adjust to the most from when you got here to getting ready for tomorrow's game yeah i think when i got here last year i was just in shock, everything was just going, everything was happening for me. Uh, and then on the court, it was, it's the small things, but the rule changes, but it's, it's a lot when you're thinking about defensive three, all those kind of things. So I actually loved playing summer league this year, just getting comfortable with the rules and being around the, the system, I guess you could say. So I feel a lot more comfortable out there. Was playing in summer league a real benefit to you to be able to make that adjustment even more with the rules, positioning yourself and whatnot? Oh, hundred uh, percent. I'm still trying to get comfortable out there, but any kind of experience helps out a lot. Like to be the new guy on the new team or the new league. What is your perspective on how Bilal is doing it at 19 years old? Man, unbelievable, unbelievable. I mean, first of all, his physical talents is unbelievable, and you can tell he's been playing basketball at a high level for a while now. The French league is a really good league, a fast paced league, and it's really developed him well. And then just off the court, he's fitting in so well. The boys love him, the boys are really getting around him, and um, as a rookie, he's doing a good job of just being himself. What is it about him that people like? Because we, we've sense it too, but I'm curious if it's any different for his teammates than it is for media people. I think just his youth, you know, that, that energy that youth, that young guys bring to the team and their excitedness to be at practice every single day really helps out a lot. And he's a funny dude, he's a funny guy, he likes to have a good time, so he's a good guy. The boys, yeah, the, the, the lads, yeah, the lads, the lads, lads. The lads. <laughs> hey, the lads. <laughs> Are you a big Aussie Rules football fan? AFL? No, nah, I follow NRL. In New South Wales, we follow NRL probably more than AFL, but it's hard not to take notice to the AFL these days. Is it the same sport? No, nah, it's different. Um, AFL is Australian football, what you call it, where NRL is like rugby, rugby league. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a bit different. Different skill set, different body shape, and yeah, it's cool though. <laughs>